Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. I'm Paul Tursellini, and in this episode, we're going to talk about our values and insulation. I'll provide instruction, as usual, but we will also feature some video clips from an interview with NREL senior engineer, Dr. Marcus Bianchi. Dr. Bianchi's expertise is in heat transfer, including building insulation. So we hope you enjoy this commentary during this episode. In part two of our Fourier's Law episode, we concluded by discussing U-factor and R-value and how they are two different ways to characterize how well heat flows through a wall. U-factor is the wall's thermal transmittance, while its inverse, the R-value, is the wall's thermal resistance. This R-value is often printed on insulation products. The higher the R-value, the more resistance to heat flow. It is important to note that the R value has units, which we showed on the previous slide, and that these units are not printed on most insulation products. Up next, we're going to hear from our insulation expert, Dr. Bianchi. He's going to go into more detail on this idea of an R value and discuss how it is an indicator of insulation performance. So today we have Marcus Bianchi with us from the National Renewable Energy Lab. Marcus, can you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are, a little bit about your background? Sure. Um, so I'm currently a research engineer at the lab um, in the Building Energy Science Group. Um, but prior to that, well, I was in the lab before and I came back, but uh, I, I had sometimes uh, working as a uh, research scientists and uh, insulation companies, Owens Corning, Johns Manville, uh, for a number of years. And before that, I was a faculty uh, doing research in heat transfer in the, well, energy efficiency, materials processing, and so on. So it sounds like the physics here is very complex um, in how heat moves through a wall. At the end of the day, we reduce all that down to an R value. What is, how is it determined? Um, and is it a good representation of how the insulation is going to perform? It's, um, yes, uh, I think that's a very good question because when you do um, compare uh, different products to insulate a wall, the way to compare is to look at a number that is the thermal resistance that that product will provide. Um, our value was essentially created. It was uh, created to create that comparison. So to, to give the elements for a customer or somebody, a designer, to decide, you know, if I put that material, that's how much heat loss I would have over the course of, of, of a year, for example. So, um, it is it is defined very specifically um, when you actually put a product between two different temperatures. Those two temperatures are fixed. Um, they are always the same, so you cannot you cannot compare if like the products have been tested at different temperatures because the mechanisms change. But everything that takes place when you put the insulation between two plates, um, one at a hot temperature, one at a cold temperature, traditionally speaking. 100 degrees Fahrenheit and 50 degrees Fahrenheit and the cold one. Um, and when you actually put the product between those two and you let it sit for a while, of a number of hours, then you can measure the heat flux or the heat flow that takes place between the two plates. Um, since you know the two temperatures and now you know the heat flux, you can actually calculate what the R value is. And a, so like you have a, a thickness and this is only valid for a given thickness. The R value is not a property of the material, is a property of the, uh, the assembly, the insulation assembly that you have. So like the thicker, the more R value would have, uh, which is not obviously a property of a material because a thickness is not. So um, that uh, measurement is very good for us to compare two products at that temperature difference. Um, insulations behave differently at different temperatures. As you increase temperatures, the R value tends to decrease. I should say the thermal resistance tends to decrease because R value is defined for a couple given temperatures. 
but the thermal resistance tends to decrease because radiation starts to become larger and larger at, at higher temperatures. And it, as it gets colder, um, the, uh, the thermal resistance tends to increase because radiation becomes smaller and smaller. So um, I think uh, understanding what our value is is important for this discussion, understanding what it represents. It's a way to compare to different systems. It takes into account every single mechanism of uh, heat transfer that takes place in that insulation. So it's even though we transform that into a con conduction-like resistance, uh, it incorporates whatever mechanisms of heat transfer that takes place inside that insulation. Um, so you can, that way, I mean, first of all, you compare systems and you can actually use that number now as, uh, as you uh, ask, Paul, as, uh, as an input for simulation tools that, you know, you, you can actually calculate, you know, given that that's the uh, thermal resistance um, of that wall, of that insulation, and then uh, con consequently of the wall, you can calculate what is the annual heat loss or heat gain that takes place in that wall. So it's a very important measurement um, it's the way that this product is labeled. Um, so different insulations have to produce that uh, that uh, number. So you know you will probably hear like that. You know, uh, fiberglass has like approximately an R four, R three point something per inch um, in 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 the units that we use in the U S. Um, if this is uh, uh, an international uh, known U S, we traditionally we use the uh, international system of units and then it would be like a number that is slightly different and and in quite 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 simpler units i should say um to compare them but in either case you're trying to compare products that are like they could be different fiberglasses could be fiberglass with cellulose fiberglass with foams etc but it gives you an idea of like how differently they behave that was a lot of really great information from Dr. Bianchi. Before we end this episode, I want to highlight a few things that he mentioned. First, he noted that insulation behaves differently at different temperatures. But what does this mean? And if this is the case, then how can we still compare insulation products? Well, the R value that's noted on the insulation label has been tabulated through a standardized testing process to indicate the building's the insulation's performance at typical building temperatures. For most building applications, the printed value represents a constant that can be used to calculate the heat transfer through the wall. Second, Dr. Bianchi expressed a distinction between the thermal resistance of individual materials and the insulation assembly. What exactly is the insulation assembly and how is that R value determined? We'll get into this more in another episode, but the insulation assembly is made up of multiple layers of different materials, each of which has their own thermal resistance or R value. And lastly, I want to acknowledge that Dr. Bianchi mentioned a few different types of insulation that you may not be familiar with. Uh, don't worry, because we have a whole episode dedicated to the different types of insulation. We'll discuss these differences, the advantages and disadvantages of each one, and we'll talk about how R value is not the only thing to consider when selecting a type of insulation. That's all for this episode, though. Thanks for watching, and as always, please let us know if you have any feedback.